It's a beautiful clear night tonight and in all probability uh, it's going to be close to being my last outing uh, for this year's Milky Way core season. We're just about to have another week full of being dumped on by loads of rainfall so I'm uh, not confident in uh, getting back out here to get some quality sort of uh, setting Milky Way core being late October already where we are um, and yeah we, we won't see the Milky Way core again now after after the end of you know sort of end of October through to mid November it'll set and won't come back to our skies until sort of late February um, early March in the eastern skies in the mornings so what I've decided to do with my last outing uh, of the season it's a fairly pointless comparison I guess but uh, it's one I've been wanting to do for a little while it's when I started my astrophotography uh, I was very much just a video guy I hadn't I'd taken a few star photos but I definitely wasn't hooked at that stage so at the time I had a Panasonic GH5 which is an amazing uh, video camera but it's a micro four thirds camera so it's a smaller sensor um, not as great with noise and doesn't have the same the micro four thirds system just because of the crop factor it doesn't have the same depth of lens ecosystem when it comes to wide and fast uh, primes or at least it didn't then there's a few more in the uh, options on the market now so I very quickly got hooked with the GH5 and really tried to push it with stacking and all sorts of you know uh, post processing tricks but I, I was never super satisfied with the um, quality of the images I was getting until I moved up to a Sony uh, A7S camera I've got an A7R here but it's pretty much the same size and format with a 20mm f1.4 now it was that 20mm f1.4 that uh, is essentially the uh, equivalent of a 10mm uh, 0.7 uh, lens on micro four thirds it just doesn't exist physically exist um, so that allowed me to capture a whole lot more light and that's where I stayed for a bit I just sort of moved over to full frame and sort of left micro four thirds as far as uh, landscape astrophotography behind me uh, I sold my GH5 got a, a A7S III um, and continued on my way um, but in amongst all that I got a star tracker now the biggest uh, downfall to you know, it's not just full frame but any um, mirrorless or DSLR camera when you're taking landscape Milky Way or even DSO um, is time is getting enough time without trailing effects of the earth rotation to get a nice clear image of your, your target now I was completely ignorant of uh, the star trackers back when I had my GH5 and it was only when I really uh, started to do a little bit of tracking probably two years or so ago now and I've just wanted, been wanting to get back out and give it another test now see what sort of images I can produce with a micro four thirds camera uh, with long shutter times um, uh, and pointed at the Milky Way just to see what kind of data I can get so um, and I thought while I'm at it that there's always so many equivalence debates I was just going to use my a7r here mainly because the pixel density between and generation of camera between the a7r and the GX85 Panasonic here uh, very roughly the same era uh, so I thought I'd do an equivalence test so on my Panasonic G85, GX85 rather here I have a Olympus 17mm uh, f1.8 lens and on this Sony a7r full frame I have a Samyang 35mm f1.8 lens so for equivalency's sake I've uh, stopped my uh, GX85 lens here down the Olympus lens down to f2 uh, and I've 
been taking a series of shots. So I'm going to take 10 tracked shots of the Milky Way. Uh, and then I'll stack those in post. And then I'm going to do something similar with the A7R, except uh, and that's at 60 seconds. The, the one unfortunate thing with the GX85 is it doesn't have a remote intervalometer port, but it, its internal time-lapse function does have a 60 second shutter speed setting. So it's, it's, I would have liked it to be a bit longer just to get a bit more signal per, per exposure. Um, but uh, with stacking, I should be able to uh, average out that noise a bit. So I'm going to do the same with my A7R. I'm going to, I've got an intervalometer here hooked up. I'm going to take 60 second intervals on it once the GX85 has finished its run. And I'm going to stop the lens down to f4, uh, taking into the account the, the crop factor difference. So two times um, uh, f2 will give you f4. Uh, and also with ISO settings, I'm going to make sure that they're uh, equivalent as as well. Now, um, obviously, uh, that's not to say that uh, your, your simple uh, micro four thirds sensor is going to trump a full frame sensor. It is. It comes down to lenses, um, and I'll, I'll cover this in a, an upcoming video. But. Um, full frame sensors themselves are you know they're no more sensitive to light they don't collect any more light than a micro four third sensor it is all the lens um, and it is far more achievable and readily available to get a wider aperture lens so for instance this 35 millimeter uh, f 1.8 lens in equivalent on at wide open equivalent on the micro four thirds would be a 17 mm uh, 0.9, uh, f.9, yeah. So there's, um, you can get some uh, 0.95 lenses, I think. Um, but I, and I think that's a Mitocon lens, the ones I'm thinking of. And uh, I have the 25 millimeter for f95 lens for that micro four thirds, and also the 50 millimeter. 0.95 for Sony E, and they're, they are very bright lenses, but they have some serious aberrations. They are not a lens you really want to be taking uh, Milky Way photos with. So anyway, the Milky Way is starting to dip pretty quick. So um, and having to do uh, t uh, 10 by one minute exposures on each camera, I just uh, want to make sure I I get all my uh, acquisition of the Milky Way done before I start uh, getting interference from the ground coming into shot. And what I'll do is after I've taken all these shots, I'll position myself with a good foreground composition. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but there's a, a valley sweeping down, uh, sort of one rock on top of the other with a big, beautiful big tree and then a uh, hill over the back there. So what I'll do there is I'll probably do some more uh, photography back up there uh, just because I don't have an intervalometer I'll probably do something like 30 31 minute uh, exposures across the valley uh, with um, and do an equivalence one there as well anyway um, time's getting on uh, I've got to get on and uh, get these captures done <laughs>
brings my imaging session to a close for the night. So I've just laid down um, 30 by one minute exposures of the foreground using F4 at ISO 3200 on this A7R uh, full frame camera and using F2 ISO 800 using my GX85. And I'll stack those together, average out noise, hopefully end up with a much cleaner foreground image and then I'll combine the, uh, the track sky images stacked up and then the uh, foreground images stacked up and we'll see what we can get out of uh, post-processing. Uh, it's just interesting, I just realised before while uh, waiting for these images to take place, this is exactly the same spot I saw off the, um, the Milky Way core season from last season as well. So I didn't even, completely unintentional, but interesting nonetheless. Anyway, the Milky Way's gone to bed well and truly, so I think it's about time I did too. We'll get these uh, photos back onto the computer at home and see what we can pull together in post-processing.